church, good morning. Hope you are all doing well. So good to see everyone. It is warm, but we are good. Um, we're so blessed to be here today. Um, I think Nikki is sharing with us today as well, so we're super looking forward to that. But um, just before we get started into worship, I just wanted to share a quick word about prayer. And um, I was reading a quote from Louis Giglio, she said that right. Um, and um, he's an amazing preacher, pastor, he's seen, someone who's seen a lot of breakthrough in prayer in his life. And um, he said this, he said, if we could only see what happens when we pray, then we would never cease to pray. And I love that quote, it's, it's just amazing. But I don't know about you, I find consistent prayer incredibly difficult. But, and, but as part of the Bible, like it's, it's a command, Paul says in Thessalonians, that we should pray without ceasing. And um, you know what's interesting to me is that I, that actually wasn't a crazy ask for the Jewish people in that time because they had developed this spiritual discipline called Berakha. And it meant that every activity they had, everything they did, they had a uh, prayer attached to it. So whenever they got up in the morning, there was a prayer that they said when they got up in the morning. Whenever they got dressed, they had a prayer for getting dressed. When they washed their hands, they had a prayer for washing their hands. And what it meant is that they just had this um, constant commune with God. And I just think that was amazing. And um, for someone like me, I, I'm really interested in habits. I naturally am a little bit chaotic. And um, there's some research to show that whenever you want to work at a habit, whenever you want to build a habit, you've got to have a cue for it. So if you want to go to the gym every morning, you should lay out your gym clothes the night before because that's going to cue you into, into going to the gym. And maybe for some of us, if you're struggling to build consistent prayer habits in your life, maybe you need a cue. Maybe you need something to help set you up for success. So maybe whenever you're getting into your car in the morning, that's your cue to say, God, thank you for everything that you're doing for me and pray for breakthrough in whatever you need God to work on um, in your life. Um, because once we build that consistent prayer habit, you know, God says that he is a rewarder of those who, who diligently seek him. So be blessed in that and be encouraged. But hey, I just wonder if you would stand with me. You're just going to pray as we begin. So yeah, Jesus. Yeah, Lord, we just want to thank you for this time today, God. We thank you that your power, prayer is powerful, God. And pray that we would be people who wouldn't cease in prayer, God, that yeah, Lord, we would just go after everything that you have for us, Lord. Yeah, Lord, I just pray for today. I pray for a service. I pray for Nikki as she comes to share, God. I just pray that as we worship, Lord, that that is a form of prayer to you as well, God. And we would just be open to receive whatever you have for us, Lord. Yeah, Lord, I pray you just bless our time together. We love you, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen.
those walls that we call sin and shame The label like prisons we couldn't escape But he came and he died and he rose Those walls are rubble now For those giants we call death and grave They were like mountains that stood in our way But he came and he died and he rose Those giants are dead now Cause this is our God, this is who he is He loves us this is our God, this is what He does, He saves us. He bore the cross, beat the grave, let heaven and earth proclaim. This is our God, King Jesus. That fear that took our breath away Faced so weak that we could barely pray But he heard every word, every whisper It's not those altars in the wilderness Tell the story
Jesus, we love you. We worship you, Lord. Come in the presence of the Lord is here, church. Breaks every stronghold. Challenges every lie. Restores. Equips. Transforms. Presence of God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your holiness. Thank you, Lord, for your holiness. Thank you, Lord, there is no one to compete with you. Thank you, Lord, that if we choose to give our lives to you, then we become the set-apart ones. We become the holy ones, just like you. Thank you today for the sweetness of your spirit, the loveliness of your presence. Jesus, you're worthy. Jesus, you're wonderful. Be exalted now in the heavens as you go. You alone deserve our praise. You're the name above all names. Be exalted now in the heavens as your glory fills this place. You alone deserve our praise. You're the name above all names. Be exalted. Be exalted now in the heavens as your glory fills this place. You alone deserve our praise. You're the name above all names. Be exalted now in the heavens as your glory fills this place. You alone deserve our praise. You're the name. Lord, thank you for your wonderful love today. Thank you for your wonderful, wonderful love, Lord, that in spite of our weaknesses, in spite of our, we don't deserve or couldn't earn or nothing of us, all of you, Jesus. Nothing of us, all of you. Lord, I pray today that we would just begin to understand more and more and more that you are holy and that we are holy and you have set us apart. I pray, Lord, that we begin to understand more and more that your presence is where we live. Your presence is where we dwell. Your presence is our everything. Lord, I pray today, Holy Spirit, that you would take away the things that would distract or consume or get in the way. And Lord, you would give us a path straight to you. In fact, we would realize that you're always there. You are always there. Lord, I pray for everything that would try to concern our attention today, everything that would try to get in the way. Lord, be gone in Jesus' name. And I ask you that your presence would fill us. Your peace would consume us. Not worry or anxiety, but your peace would consume us. 
and we would be anxious for nothing because your praise is on our lips. Lord, thank you for your presence today. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness in this place. Thank you, Lord, that we are in a rich season, and this is a rich well where there are no limits to the goodness and the sustenance and the provision of our God. He's always got more. He's always got more. Let your anointing just flow, Lord. Your anointing just flow. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. Can we praise the Lord as you're sitting in your seat? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, guys. Wow. Wow. We're just enjoying the presence of God there. Wow. Guys, you know, sometimes you try to get to the beach, and then you never get there because there's a traffic jam. Today, we got to the beach, amen. Come on, the presence of the Lord is here, uh, and he's doing great things. And maybe you, you're in need of some things. Well, he's got it. Uh, enjoy this warm weather. It probably won't be here next week. I know you're sweating, uh, but at least we're all sweating together. It's not the good thing. We're all in the same boat, uh, and so it is what it is. Uh, I remember back to our friends when we did iHeart, and they did the. We did our fun day in the middle of the mile, and they said, "Hey, sure, when you're wet, you're wet. Okay, when you're sweating, you're sweating. We're in the same boat. Uh, it is good to see you. Hey, why don't you turn around and say hello to somebody today? Come on, turn around, and be friendly, say hello to somebody." Come on, it's nice to be together. It's nice to talk to each other. Okay, I, I got to tell you a couple of quick, exciting things. If you know about our Project Possible, which is our impossible dream, which God makes all things possible, that we're going to resurrect a building out here that would see this town and this nation transformed. Well, we sold another seat this week. Can we praise the Lord for that? Come on, praise the Lord. Uh, if you don't know what that is, then you can look up our website, but the, the long and short of it is uh, we tried to break down this idea of how could we ever raise millions of pounds. Well, maybe we could do it one chunk at a time, one bit at a time. And so we thought about seats, because just like the seats you're sitting in right now, you might sit in this one this week, you might sit in another one another, uh, and it was just a, a simple way for us to break down the cost. And so a lot of people do 30 pounds a month uh, and pay that seat off, and then some people just pay 1,800 pounds, and they just, that's it done. Uh, some people do less, some people do more, but the whole heart is that we are connected in this. Well, the other thing I want to bring to your attention is we have our plan permission up again for approval. So we're, we're kind of, we, we said we were nearly there last May or May, a year and a half ago. Well, now we're saying we're nearly here again. So uh, we are about to get plan of permission approved, but I need you to pray the next five days. Next Friday will be the cutoff point. Up until that, there is still opportunity for objection, but come on, we're going to believe for all the way through. Amen? Come on, we're going to pray for that. We're going to believe for that. Uh, and so I want to put that on your heart to pray this week, not out of worry and anxiety, because here's the bottom line. God is in control. We would just, we just like to see it done. Amen? But he will do it in his perfect time and his perfect will. We'll just agree that it could be this Friday. Amen? So pray with me on that, and hopefully we'll bring you some good news. Uh, and we've got lots more coming up. Awesome. Okay. I, I want to do one more quick thing. Nikki's going to come speak in just a minute, so be ready. You're going to be, it's going to be good. Uh, Newcomers Branch, as uh, Karen just mentioned, please come along this Saturday. If you've been new to Vibe in this last while and you've not been to a Newcomers Brunch, it's free. You get beautiful pancakes and all sorts of other treats. Come along. You're going to enjoy it. 10 o'clock to 12 o'clock. Come out here rather than late because if it's out, it's out. Uh, so come at 10. But I want to do one more thing. Tyler's going back to university. I want to pray for this guy as he goes back to uni. Come on, give him a big hand. He's going to... Taylor, come on up. We're going to pray for you, bro. You can't embarrass this guy. He's an actor. It's fine. <laughs> come on. I want you to stretch out your hands. We're going to pray for him. Come on. He's going back to uni. Uh, we're believing he's going to do incredible things. So, Lord, I pray for Tyler. I thank you, Lord, as he goes back to uni, Lord, that you would just really encourage him, enrich him, Lord. Uh, come on. It's not easy out there, but he's got the Spirit of God inside of him, which is greater than any other thing. And so, Lord, I pray he's not going back as a mouse. He's going back as a lion in Jesus' name. And I pray, Lord, he's going to be bringing people to church, Lord. He's going to be praying with people. He's going to be seeing people saved, Lord, healed, delivered. Lord, we're not believing for small. We're believing for big because he's got the same Spirit that David had, the Holy Spirit. And so if David could kill giants, so can Tyler. Lord, I pray you're anointing and blessing on his life. I pray as he goes back, Lord, you're setting him up. He will see divine appointments. He will see things just set in place, and he will know, okay, this is God. This is God. I pray for some great people to come around him, Lord, because everybody needs mates. Everybody needs Christian friends around him to encourage them. And so, Lord, I pray as he goes, no fear, no worry, no anxiety, but strength, peace, and comfort. And, Lord, and then, Lord, that you would surround him 
with great people that will run the race with them. Lord, bless Tyler. Holy Spirit, fill him full in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Give another big hand. Thank you, Tyler. How's everybody doing? Good? Good? 12 o'clock. Are you here? Oh, yeah. We are, oh, do you know what? I'm just telling you this. We went to America a couple of weeks ago, and it was so good, but there is no place that I would rather be than right here. Amen. There is no place. Honestly, loved it. Loved the people. Wish them all the best. They are, they are blessed. I'm sure they're saying exactly the same thing. There's nowhere I would rather be. But you know what? God is moving in Armagh, and I am just so glad to be part of it. I'm so glad that it's happening in our time, in my time. I'm glad that I'm able to see and hear the stories, and I'm able to see his hand, and that he is working, and that I get to witness that. Um, is he moving all over the earth? Yes, he is, but I just love Arma. I just love it. I love Arma. I love this church. I love what God is doing here. I am, um, I, honestly, all day, I could just, I could just cry. I was in the worship there now, and I was like, <laughs> try, I had to sit down to hold back the tears because I knew I was going to get up here and my makeup would all be run off. Well, it's run off anyway, because it's hot, but, but God is so good, and he is moving, and it's just incredible. Um, we've got the best team. We've just got an amazing church. I'm not even going to get into it, honestly. Just um, other people, you know, different people that we know and pastors and things, and we have a lot of people in our lives that we go to for advice, that we go to to run things past. We have people who are heroes of the faith and we go to them and all the advice in the world is definitely welcome but what God is doing here is very very unique and we're in a church where 95% of the people are taking part and part of teams and serving the Lord with their giftings and the other 5% just haven't been here long enough to get joined up to a team yet that's literally the only reason What's the point of, of getting involved? The point is, is that, that the Lord is able to use you and that you're able to be empowered and sent out into your job and your workplace and family home and everything and just be his hands and feet wherever you are. And I love to be part of that, you know, where um, it just flips everything on its head. But God is moving and it's incredible. And we are about to embark on an eight day long praise and worship time. <laughs> Is it mad like Karen said? Yes, and I love that, but God loves crazy. Exactly, Karen. And this was an idea, like, it's been on my heart for a long, long time, but I put it into words about maybe six weeks ago when I was talking to Chelsea one night, and I said, I don't think I've actually said this out loud yet. She says, I love the idea. And then last week, I said to Daryl, and I thought we would do it in about six months' time. He's like, let's do it next week. So anyway... With the busyness of everything, we forgot to tell everybody about it last Sunday, but we put out a video online. You can go and check out the details, everything. But pretty much this place is open for 24 hours for eight days long. And we're going to kick it off with a worship night tomorrow night. And it's just going to be a space to be able to come and worship. And I'll tell you more about that afterwards. But just in preparation for that, I also felt the Lord putting this word on my heart for today. And it's a word, prioritize his, pre his presence. Prioritize his presence. You know, it's so important that we prioritize his presence. And as I was thinking about this, I thought, well, you guys know this. You know, we are a church that we love his presence, amen? We love his presence. We come here every Sunday just to get together, just to be able to meet with the Lord together. And we love his presence. I know in here there's many, many people who prioritize the presence of the Lord every single day in your life. And when you come on a Sunday, this is just an overflow of what is happening throughout the week. But either way, the Lord calls us deeper and he calls us further. And e either way, life creeps in. And I find myself having to say, Lord, I'm going to prioritize your presence again in this season. And 
just as we're coming into a new season, I mean, this is a great season. I have loved the kids going back to school. Amen. Anybody else saying the same thing? Yes, it's good to get back to routine. I mean, I'm trying not to show it on my face too much, but I was doing whoopies and yippies on the way home uh, after I dropped them off because there's just something about having something to get up for and getting them out the door. And anybody that has one child, you do not realize some like new mums and dads are always going, oh, this is crazy. This is just, oh, I'm so tired all the time. I just want to say, you don't know that you're living. All right. I, I not got rid. I was going to say got rid. No, I, I, I let three children go uh, into school this week and they have loved it and we just love getting back into routine. This is probably one of my favorite times in the year, both in church and life. I just love it because the weather is pretty good and we're able to step into a new season. We're able to re-evaluate and readjust And in this season, I feel the Lord say unto my life, and I feel to put the call out to you as well. Why don't we prioritize his presence in this season? You know, we are a people who know God's presence, but do we prioritize it? We're going to read about Moses. We're going to read a lot in Exodus 33. And I'm going to build my way up to that. But first of all, let me just start with this verse. Moses. He was a man who prioritized the presence of the Lord. He needed the presence of the Lord. He knew more than the provision of the Lord and more than the promises of the Lord. In Exodus 33, 15, it says, Then Moses said to him, If your presence, he's talking to the Lord, if your presence does not go with us, do not send us up from here. You know, just this week I had the health visitor in my house and she um, was doing a checkup with Reuben, his one-year checkup, and she just wanted um, to let me know everything that was happening round about. And she said, the best thing in Arma for mums to go to, uh, the best baby clubs and everything. She says, have you ever heard of a place called The Vibe? And I says, yeah, I have. And she says, that place is amazing. She said, there's so many things that happen there. They've got so many things for kids, for, uh, for babies, for toddlers, for kids, for youth. They've got so many things. They've got a cafe. She says, do you know they've got a cafe? And she said, they've got a little play area, and it's fantastic. She said, I would really, really recommend it. It's a great place to go to. And, you know, it just about got to that awkward kind of time where I was like, she's told me too much now for me to turn around and say, yes, we run it. Um, but I had to go there so I said to her I said yes that's the church that we're pastors of and eventually she she got it she says oh right okay she says well they do great things there she says she went on she says they do great things there's a there's a fun Fridays where they put the bouncy castle up and there's a face painter and do you know they've got a kids club and they've got a youth club on a Friday and I'm going yes I know (laughs) I know but here's the thing we prayed Years ago, we got a word from the Lord and we prayed into it. We prayed that we would be the fourth emergency service here in Arma. That when people would, be, would need help in their lives, that others would direct them to Vibe. And that health visitor was able to tell me that they always talk about what happens at Vibe, that they keep in the loop with what happens at Vibe, and that when they meet mums and they go to see the babies, um, and remember they're meeting every baby in the area and every family, then she's recommending Vibe to everyone. Praise the Lord. Amen. (laughs) Praise the Lord. And she said, the best place to go in Arma for that type of thing is the Vibe. She says, the Vibe. I'm going, I didn't correct her, but inside I was going, Vibe. (laughs) Eventually, I was saying the vibe at the end of it. But she says the best, best place to go for that kind of thing is the vibe. And then she said the best place in Katie is the Baptist church. So the Lord is doing great things through the church and in the church. And it's great to see it happen. But let me tell you something. It doesn't matter what programs that we have that are going. It doesn't matter what great things that we have in the diary and what fantastic ideas that, that we all come up with together. 
It doesn't matter what we're doing for Arma. If we don't have the presence of the Lord with us, Lord, do not send me from here. Lord, I don't want to go into it without your presence. I don't want to just bring what Arma needs and that's it. I don't want to just give them a soft play area and a menu that's affordable downstairs if that's all that it's about. I don't want to just do a baby club, a toddler club, a kids club, a youth club. I don't even want to do church on Sundays if it's not about your presence. Lord, I need your presence. We need your presence, Lord. The point is, is that people will come through the door and they will experience firsthand the presence of the Lord every day of the week. That when they come in to have their child's birthday party on a, on a Saturday, that they will experience the presence of the Lord. And let me tell you, it happens. People often say, and the girls will tell you, people often say when they come in, something's different about this place, which opens up a door for us to be able to say, yes, the Lord is here. Let me tell you about him. And you know, even in life, in whatever that we are leading in, let's be a people that say, Lord, whatever it is that we're looking for, we want your presence first. I know that I need his presence to be a wife married to Daryl. I know that I need his presence to be a mom to my four kids. I know that I need his presence in whatever comes my way because we live in a fallen world. We live in a world where we are not immune to the things of this world. We are not immune to, uh, to you know, things going wrong. But I need his presence to be able to get through each day. I need his presence to be able to face every battle. And Moses was in that same place where he knew that he needed the presence of God. Lord, if your presence does, presence does not go with us, don't send us up from here. Well, where were they? See, Moses was the leader of the Israelites. And where were they? I'm just going to give you a short kind of run up to where he's finding himself. And at this part in Exodus 33, if you have your phone, if you have your Bible, whatever one, it's all good. But you can pull that up and we're going to stay in Exodus 33 for a while. Or the words are going to come up, the verses are going to come up on the screen. But Moses, he had been up in Mount Sinai for 40 days and 40 nights. And he had been with God and he had got two stone tablets and the Lord had written on these tablets with his own finger, the 10 commandments. And Moses had spent that time with God. But while he was up there, he heard from the Lord in detail. Who knows that the Lord doesn't leave out details. He knows every detail about everything that is going on. And he was able to tell Moses at that time, Moses, about the, the, the details of what were happening down at the bottom of the mountain. And what was happening with the Israelites was not good. It wasn't good at all. Moses had left them in Aaron's care. That was his brother. And he said, look after them while I'm up there. Lead them while I'm up there. And Aaron started to follow the lead of the people rather than leading them. And the people started to say, Aaron, will you make gods for us that we can follow? Because we don't know where Moses has gone. He's been away for too long. They were impatient. They couldn't even wait. And instead of trusting the God who had made a way for them until now, instead of that, they wanted a God that they could see right in front of their face. And so they asked Aaron to make a God for them. And what does he do? He made one. He got them to take off all their gold jewelry. They put it into a furnace. They melted it all down and they made a golden calf. And these people, God told Moses, they're down there and they're worshiping different gods. So Moses goes down to the bottom of the mountain and he's so upset when he sees what is happening. So upset that he throws the stones down and they break. He takes the golden calf, he melts it again, he grinds it all up and he puts it into the water so that the Israelites will drink it. Not only that, but then God turns the Levites against the rest of the people. He says, you need to go in and, and kill them. There's deaths that happen. There's a plague that happens. The Israelites now know the wrath of God. He is a holy and just God, and he is a jealous God, and he will not be mocked. And he's showing the Israelites who he is and that they can have no other gods before him. So then it gets to this point, and God is angry, and it says in Chapter 32, verse 9, it says, The Lord also said to Moses, I have seen this people, and they are indeed a stiff-necked people. They're stubborn. 
Now leave me alone that my anger can burn against them and I can destroy them. Then I will make you a great nation. You know, if I heard this and I heard that I was under the wrath of God and that my people were under the wrath of God, I'm sorry, but me being selfish old me would probably say, Lord, if you're going to kill them, would you just save me? Moses, he doesn't take this from the Lord. He doesn't accept it. Here's what he does. He says, Lord, I'm not thinking about myself here. Lord, save the people. Remember who they are and remember who you are and remember, Lord, who you have been to them. Don't let your wrath come down on them, Lord. Judge me. Who else said that? Jesus and Moses. He starts to get real with God. Do you know today it's okay to get real with God? Amen. Anybody say amen. It's okay to get real with God. In fact, he loves it whenever we get real with him. He loves it when we tell him just how hard it is. He loves it whenever we tell him everything that is going on in our hearts. Maybe it's hurt. Maybe it's pain. Maybe it's disappointment. Maybe it's worry. Maybe it's fear. Maybe it's that you hope for something great, greater than what life is giving you right now. Moses got real with the Lord. I would say that Moses was in an uncomfortable in-between moment because God had said one thing. I'm going to destroy the people. I'm going to show them my anger. But Moses didn't accept it. And he went back and forth and back and forth with this conversation. Here's what Moses didn't do when he faced the messy middle. He didn't run away. So many people, myself included at times, so many people run away when it gets messy. Lord, I can't handle what I'm being given here. I'm going to run away. We see it as rejection on the Lord's part. And so we say, well, I'm going to run too. If you reject me, I'm going to reject you. If you're angry with me, I'm going to be angry with you. But we have no place to be angry with the Lord. He is a good God who knows what is best for us. And nothing has ever or ever will be out of his control. Amen. So Moses decides that he is going to press in. And he decides to make a meeting place with the Lord in that time in his life that's this messy middle. He makes a meeting place with the Lord. He builds a tent. It becomes the tent of meeting, it's called. And that's where he meets with the Lord. And he will not give up. And he will not accept what God is saying. And instead, he wants to be in God's presence. He perseveres. He sets up a place. He makes this mom moments for himself to be in God's presence. And he speaks with the Lord every day. I want to encourage you, when things get tough, do not run away, draw close. When you don't feel the presence of the Lord, do not run away from his presence, draw close. Because the Bible says that when we draw close to him, he will draw close to us. He is there. And it says here, and this is beautiful, in Exodus 33, 11, it says, the Lord would speak with Moses face to face, just as a man speaks with his friend. Now, when I read this, I had to do a double take. Because when I read it, I just assumed that it was Moses that was speaking to the Lord like he was his friend. But actually, both happened. And the Lord initiated it. He initiates the communication with us. He initiates that space for us to have communion with him, for us to be with him in his presence. It's him that initiates it. And here, because Moses draws close to him, it says the Lord would speak with Moses just as a man speaks with his friend. Who wants to be on first name terms with the Lord today? Who wants to be able to speak with him face to face? There is a way. We don't have to build a tent anymore, amen? We don't have to do it all ourselves anymore, provide dead sacrifices. Jesus has already made a way for us. He made a way that we could come to him. He paid for it once 
and for all, for our sins, so that we could come to him any time that we like, night or day, whatever season of life that we are going through. And guess what? He wants to speak to you today as a friend speaks with a friend. How do you speak to God today? Do you go to him like he's a lawyer? Do you go to him like you're trying to get him to plead your case for you in some things? Do you go to him like he's a doctor? You know, sometimes when we go to the doctor, we have five minutes because it's just so busy in there. And we have five minutes to be able to get across all the wrong things that are going on with us, whatever that might be. I've sat there so many times, maybe with one of the kids, and I've thought, if they will just get this, what's actually happening, they'll take it serious and then they'll refer us on to whoever we need to be referred to. Jessica was referred for her tonsils to come out and guess how long the waiting list is? Seven years, seven years. And I'm like, if this doctor would plead my case enough, if he would realize just how important that this is to me and how crucial it is to her that she gets this soon, then he will make sure to get us to the top of this list. We have someone who's better than any doctor. And guess what? He already knows what's going on. He is already on our side. And he is interceding on behalf of us to the Father at the right-hand side of the Father every minute of every day. We don't need him to plead. We, We don't need to plead our case with him. He is already on our side. We are friends with God. Maybe you see the Lord like he is your boss. I see the Lord like he's my boss a lot. It's not always a bad thing. But what kind of boss is he? You see, if we see him as the CEO of a company and we want to be promoted in this company, then we'll go to him with a list of all the good things that we've done for him this week. We'll say to him, Lord, do you not know, like I'm on the worship team, I'm the host team. That's a tough one to handle. Lord, I'm, I'm on the kids team and I'm on the youth team. That's a tough one to handle. Lord, do you not see that I've given my whole life for you? I moved from South Africa for you. I moved from America for you. I moved from Latvia for you. Sometimes we go to him like he's a boss and we say, Lord, do you not see everything that I have done for you and I've given up for you now, Lord? All those things that I want, I'm ready. Give them to me. I'm ready. I've done it all for you, Lord. The Lord doesn't even need that. He knows what is good for us in his perfect time and in his perfect will. And he is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. We can enter his presence knowing that he is our friend today. Here is what Moses says. He says, now if I find favor with you, then teach me your ways and I will know you so that I may find favor with you. Isn't this a funny verse? It starts and it ends the same way, pretty much. Now, if indeed I have found favor with you, please teach me your ways so I will know you that I may find favor with you. It made me think about this space and about life and about being with the Lord. It's only because we find favor with him through Jesus that we get to be in his presence in the first place. But how is it that he accepts us just as we are? He loves us through and through, and there's nothing we could do to make him love us any less. And yet, there's a way to find even more favor with him. Let's not be a people who are sitting back, apathetic, and saying, Jesus has paid for it all, so I've got nothing else to do. Do you know that the more time that we spend with him, the more that we draw close to him, the more he draws close to us, The more times that we spend with him, the more that we get to know him. We get to know his ways. We get to know, we get to start to become like him. You become who you spend time with. Amen. You become like those who you spend time with. And then becoming like him with his attributes, with the fruits of the spirit flowing through our lives. Guess what? we actually are able to find more favor with him. That probably looks like we'll see more of his favor in our lives. And we're able to look at it through a different lens. Moses knew that spending time with God would mean that he would know God. And do you know, there is a direct correlation between the time spent lingering in God's presence 
sitting in God's presence and then the change in us so that we can be a change to the world. The more that we spend time with him, the more that we become like him, the more that we are able to go and bring him into the world. Amen. In Exodus 33, 11, it also says this. It says, the Lord would speak with Moses face to face, just as a man speaks with his friend. Then it says, then Moses would return to the camp. He had stuff to do. He had practical things that needed to be done. But it says this, his assistant, the young man, Joshua, son of Nun, this is the famous Joshua in the Bible, who's a young man at this time. He would not leave the inside of the tent. Other translations say that he would linger in the tent. Even when Moses would leave, he would linger there. Here's what it says in the dictionary for the word linger. It says that to linger is to stay in a place longer than usual because of a reluctance to leave. Oh, Lord, I want to linger in your presence. Lord, I don't want to think about all the things that need to be done. I don't want to think about how I look to others. I don't want to think about anything else other than you. Oh, Lord, that I would linger in your presence. You see, here's the thing. Lingering actually isn't the problem. We all linger. We all linger at stuff, don't we? Like you might be sitting here today and say, well, that's okay. Other people that aren't as busy as me, they might be able to linger a bit longer. But for me, I don't think I would have the time to linger. I want to tell you that to linger actually isn't the problem. How often do we, or how long do we spend scrolling through Facebook, scrolling through Instagram, on TikTok, on Snapchat? How long do we spend searching things that we want? Maybe you're looking for a new car and you're just scarring the internet for it. How long do we spend binging on Netflix? If a new season comes out of When Calls the Heart, which I love, I know it's just very, very sad, but I love it. I'm going to try and watch that season all in one go if I can. And the rest of the time I said, no, I need to go to bed at a decent time because the kids get up early. But you can bet that when that season of When Calls the Heart comes out, I am going to linger until 2 o'clock in the morning until the whole thing is watched. We can linger. Lingering isn't the problem. Do you know when I go to my mother-in-law's house, I love to linger. I love to linger when I go to my mom's house as well. Why? because they just become mum to everybody. And I love sitting and getting a cup of tea and knowing that the kids are sorted out. I love to linger. Who here is a bit like me and you just love to linger when you get home in the car? Just for five minutes. You know, you've spent, you've gone the journey all the way home and you're just like, this is me time. I'm just gonna linger before I go into the bedlam. That is my life. Earlier on, Heather Joe said he likes to linger. I don't know why, because I could think of nothing better than going home to see your lovely face. But sometimes we just love to linger at the wrong things. The Lord wants us to linger in his presence. Remember what it said, the definition. To linger is to stay in a place longer than usual with a reluctance to leave. For the next eight days, we're going to be opening up this space. We're going to have this place open night and day for worship. And it's to provide a place where we can come and we can really light a flame of love for the Lord that just will not go out. And can we linger in his presence anywhere? Yes, we can. And please do. It's not about being in church. But we felt like that we needed to open up this space to be able to just linger in his presence longer than usual. You see, when we linger in his presence, we get to know him better. And Daniel eleven thirty two 32, it says this, that those who know their God will do great exploits. Joshua then, talking about Joshua, who stayed in the tent. Joshua's life was shaped by God's glory and by his presence. Is it any wonder in Joshua 1, when Moses dies, who becomes the leader of the Israelites? It's Joshua. You see, Joshua has been in the presence of the Lord from he was just a young man. 
And he's got to know the voice of the Lord. So much so that when he is called to lead the Israelite people and he's in the middle of a battle, the angel of the Lord shows up and immediately he knows by the sound of the voice, by the language, by just the presence of the Lord, he knows that God is in this place. So when he is ready for a battle and he's looking at the walls of Jericho that are so high and his tiny army that he has, his tiny resources that he has, he knows that it's the angel of the Lord standing in front of him. The angel of the Lord says, take off your shoes, your you're standing on holy ground. And Joshua, before he goes into battle, lays down, face down, and worships the Lord. That is what comes from being in the presence of the Lord. So that every battle that we face, whether that battle is in school this week, whether that battle is in university this week, whether that battle is at home this week, in your workplace this week, out on the street this week, no matter where that battle is, that you know, I know the voice of the Lord and I know know that he says that he will never leave me or forsake me. You see, what happened was, as you can read this yourself in Exodus 33, what happened was Moses contended with the Lord, just like Jacob had done. Moses contended with the Lord and he wrestled with him back and forth. He reminded the Lord, I know who you are. You are our God. You did not bring us this far to leave us. And the Lord answered him and he said, my presence will go with you. I will never leave you. And time and time and time again through the oncoming chapters after that, it's, he says it again and again. Do not be discouraged. Do not fear for I am with you. Be strong and courageous. He ends up saying to Joshua, be strong and courageous for I am with you. I'll never leave you. And today, his presence is with us. If you know him, his presence is in you. And he will never leave you and never forsake you. Do you know, in his presence, Joshua, he knew the voice of God, but also he was commissioned in the Lord's presence. It's in God's presence where you are commissioned. It's in the Lord's presence where you receive direction. It's in the Lord's presence where you receive comfort. It's in the Lord's presence where you receive healing. It's in his presence where you receive his promises. But so many people, Christian or not, are walking around their life, walking through their life aimlessly with no direction. They're, they're walking through life with no purpose because they've been looking for the position rather than the presence. They've been looking for the promise rather than the presence. And today I want to tell you that if you prioritize the presence of the Lord, draw close in every season. You prioritize his presence over your possessions. You prioritize his presence over your place in this world, in your family, in your workplace, in your friend group. You prioritize his presence over everything. Then it's there where you will get the direction for your life and he will teach you his ways. It says here in Psalm 16, 11, it says, you make known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. You know, there's joy in his presence today. I'm going to get the worship team up. And we can walk everywhere. We can go through life. We can be anywhere and know that his presence is with us. But who here knows there's a difference between actually being present with, some, with someone and really being present? Like we can be at the table together having dinner, everybody be on their phones and iPads, and we're not present with each other. It happens if we want peace. <laughs> we can be in a car journey and be present with each other in person, but not be present with each other in our conversation. I remember growing up, we went on road trips all the time. 
Anytime it was a good day, it was into the car, we're going to Newcastle. Into the car, we're going to Port Rush. Into the car, we don't know where we're going, but you'll find out when we get there. We had road trips a few times a week to go to certain churches to sing. And our family, we would get all four kids and my mum and dad into the car and all the instruments all into the car. We knew how to position ourselves in the car. There was a keyboard, there was the drum kit in the back. And when we would go to sleep at night on the way back home, me and my brothers all knew just how to curl up together that would be comfortable. Same position every single time. We knew how to travel together. But when I would get into that car, I would know what I was there for. I was there to listen to my parents' conversation. I was. I made sure that I was just in the middle, that I was in a direct line to be able to hear their conversation. One of my kids is exactly like that. And every time I had an opinion, I would give it, as if it was my conversation as well. I was there to talk. I've always loved talking. I was there to talk. I was there to take part. I was there to get to know them. I was there to get to know all the business and all the gossip and everything that was happening in their world. I was there to be present. And at times my mom would say, okay, we're having quiet time in the car now, which was code for be quiet. But it was in the car where we would be practicing our songs for the next place that we'd go to. It was in the car where I learned how to do harmonies. Here's what I'm saying. We can be present with each other and not really be present. We can be present here at church, but not really engage in the Lord's presence. Do you know he is here and he wants to meet every single one of us? Not just a blanket presence but a personal presence. He wants to know everything that is going on in your life. He wants to be present right with you. And not only here, but he wants to go with you tomorrow and the next day and the next day. You see, if I come into this place and I come into his presence and I'm focused on my needs, I will never have enough. I'll be thinking about how I need this and I need that and I just don't have enough money for it and oh, I was looking at Instagram and that person's house was incredible and oh, they put this big massive extension on the house and a swimming pool. I would love a swimming pool, Lord. And uh, you know, yeah, if I just had one of those there sports cars, that would be amazing. Whatever it is, we can go to the Lord with a list of needs. And we'll never have enough if we're looking at ourselves and our our own needs. We will never have enough. That relationship that we need restored, if I'm looking at me and my needs, that relationship and the need there is far too big for God to handle. But if I come into his presence looking at him and not looking at the problem, but fixing my eyes on him in his presence, then I realize that he is more than enough. I go from not having enough to worshiping the God of more than enough. I lift my eyes off me and I fix them on him and I realize he is the God of more than enough. Why do we need his presence? because we need our focus adjusted today and you are not on your own if you feel like this and you are not a bad Christian if you feel like this and you haven't just missed the mark if you feel like this and you haven't done in every kind of opportunity that he would have ever had for you if you feel like this if you feel like this you are very very normal we read through his word about so many people who felt like this so often Moses killed a man, let God down. We can read as many stories about Joshua where he totally missed the mark on things as we do about the great exploits that he did for the Lord. Today, you're not alone if you struggle with being in his presence and finding the time to linger right there. He wants to be present with us in our every day. I just wanna tell you a quick story before I finish. There was this couple, and it's a famous story that's shared now, and you might have heard it before, but there was a couple called Sandy and Bernice, a man and a woman. And they 
were missionaries from uh, England to Israel. And when they went to Israel, and they moved into their house, and they soon became aware after a little while that there was a dove living in their house, way up in the rafters. And Sandy said to Bernice, he said, how do you feel about the dove living in this house? And Bernice said, well, actually, I feel like that it's a sign from the Lord on his, of his favor. And I feel like that um, I would really like the dove to stay. And so they talked about this and they realized that every time that they would shout, the dove would leave. Every time that they would slam a door, the dove would leave. If they didn't live aware of the dove in their house, the dove wouldn't remain. I feel the Lord on this for, for me and for all of us in here. Are we going to live in a way that we want the dove to remain? in our lives. The Bible often talks about the Holy Spirit being like a dove. See, we can have the presence of the Lord with us and not be aware of it. He will never leave us or forsake us. He's not going to fly away, but he's actually made it possible for us to live in a way that we are aware of his presence each and every day throughout anything that we go through. But certain things make us not be just as aware of his presence. Things like hurt, bitterness, anger. Things like overwhelming fear. You know, the type that you believe over anything else. And the Lord wants us to be aware of his presence in our lives every single day. You know, he's made it possible that we are able to respond to situations through his lens, through his answer, through what he says about the situation. You know, I remember there's a story about Gideon and Gideon is hiding. He's hiding from God and he's hiding from the enemy. And when God comes to him, he says, He calls him a valiant warrior. A valiant warrior. You see, the Lord sees things not as they are, but He sees things as they could be. He sees them as He's intended them to be. And today, maybe something that is holding you back today from being in His presence is that you're saying, I've let him down. I couldn't possibly be in his presence again. Maybe you're saying, no, my sin is far too great. I couldn't possibly be in his presence again. I didn't read this verse, but I want to read it because this describes the Lord. As the Lord then, later on in chapter 34 of Exodus, as he was present with Moses, the Lord declared his name. And here's what he said. The Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God. This is his name. Slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness, maintaining love to thousands and forgiving wickedness, rebellion and sin. That's his name. He's compassionate and gracious slow to anger, abounding in love and in faithfulness, maintaining love to thousands and forgiving wickedness, rebellion and sin. That's who He is. He is not an angry God. He is a just God. He is a holy God. But His Son already paid the price for our freedom so that we have a way to Him today. Let's stand together. And so this week, as we go into our eight days of prayer, you might feel it on your heart to fast as well in, the, in these times. But as we go into prayer, or sorry, praise and worship, let's not go in talking to the Lord like He's anything other than a friend because that's exactly how he wants to talk to us. We are gonna have encounters with, with him this week. We're gonna find direction in his presence this week. 
We're not coming here for that. We're coming here just to worship Him because we love Him and because He is worthy. But this week, people are going to be commissioned into the next season of their lives. This week, we're going to draw close to Him and He will draw close to us. And that might be here in church. Come along if you can because it's better together. But also, let's be aware of the dove in our home. Let's be aware of the dove in our cars. Let's be aware of the dove when the kids are fighting, when there's a lot of homework. Let's be aware of the dove when somebody just presses your buttons. Let's be aware of the dove. Lord, we thank you for your word. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for your call and for your challenge on each of our lives today. Lord, we choose to fix our eyes on you again. We thank you, Lord, that you are compassionate and gracious, God. We thank you, Lord, that you are slow to anger and abounding in love and faithfulness. Lord, for those that need forgiveness today, Lord, we say sorry. Forgive us, Lord. Set us free. Cleanse us. Make us clean again. Thank you for the price that you paid on the cross, Jesus, for my sin. I accept your forgiveness. Now, Lord, help me to live a life that is worthy of your name each and every day. Lord, I pray, Lord, that we would not do it without you, that we would know your presence in everything that we do every day, Lord, of our lives. Lord, thank you, Lord, for a fresh call. Thank you, Lord, for a fresh season. Thank you, Lord, that you have found favor with your people. Thank you, Lord, that you want to teach us your ways. Thank you, Lord, that you have put your favor on each and every person here. Now, Lord, I pray that we will walk in the fullness and the goodness of God each and every day of our lives. Lord, that you would remind us who we are in Christ, sons and daughters of the most Most high God, thank you, Lord, that there is nothing impossible for you, Lord. And Lord, this week, Lord, we commit it to you. Lord, our worship time kicking off tomorrow night. We commit it to you, Lord, in your name. And Lord, we pray, Lord Jesus, that you will be exalted and glorified, lifted high, that you will be well pleased, Lord, with the praises of your people in this place. Lord, we pray for your manifest presence to fall down. And Lord, that we would just... Have the most awesome week, Lord, in your presence, whether it's in work, whether it's at home, whatever we're going to. Lord, for those needing direction today, Lord, I pray, Lord Jesus, that you will give them direction in your presence. Lord, for those in here, here in in this place today, needing healing, needing comfort, needing a promise to hold on to, Lord, We pray, Lord Jesus, that you will speak directly and clearly and in detail, Lord. Oh, Lord, we love you so much and we love to worship you. You are worthy of all our praise. You are worthy of all the glory. Lord, we thank you that we are your people, that you love us, that you are our friends, and that, Lord, we can call ourselves friends of God. We love you, Lord Jesus. Come on, let's worship him together. Amen. It's how great the chasm that lay between us. How high the mountain I could not climb. In desperation, I turned to heaven and spoke your name. Into the night And through the darkness Your loving kindness Tore through the shadows of my soul The work is finished The end is written Jesus Christ my living hope. Who could imagine so great a mercy? What heart could fathom 
touch by this grave the God of ages stepped out from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame the cross has spoken I am forgiven the King of kings calls me his own beautiful Savior I'm yours forever Jesus Christ my living hope you say hallelujah praise the one who set me free hallelujah death has lost its grip on me you have broken every chain there's salvation in your name jesus christ my living hope you are my living hope then came the morning that sealed the promise your buried body began to breathe out of the silence the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on Praise the Lord. Give him another praise, will you? Come on, praise the Lord. Come on, let me pray for you, Lord. I thank you for every person, every kid, every adult, Lord. Thank you for all the things you're doing. Come on, this is a joyful place, but I say it's far greater. It's far better. There's far more opportunities. Lord, we are called to go. We've been equipped to go. We've got everything that we need to go. We should go. Lord, thank you for being here today. Thank you for your encouragement. Thank you for building faith in our hearts, Lord. But we ask you, Jesus, we are here to change the world with the good news of God. Lord, let's go. Let's go in Jesus' name. Lord, bless and favor in every home, every person. If we're far from you, come back to him. If we don't know Jesus, put your trust in Jesus. And if you know him, go for him. Lord, bless every person in your precious name. Amen. Amen.
Wow, praise the Lord. Guys, please hang around. Tea and coffee is here. If you want a cold drink, you can have a cold drink. Have a chat with someone, get to know. If you are new, then please go to the Connections desk. And don't forget about the Newcomers Brunch next Saturday. Love you to come if you're new. You'll be more than welcome. Thank you so much.